What's going on guys and girls? It's Ghost Robo and this morning Rockstar unveiled Red Dead Redemption 2 gameplay. Hallelujah, it looks so freaking beautiful and so freaking awesome and we're going to use the trailer to help convey my five favorite things from this gameplay. The things that I think are the coolest and most exciting. I'll be honest, not the biggest GTA guy, but I loved Red Dead Redemption, played the whole game, beat the whole game, and I'm super pumped for two. This fall is full of titles that Maybe I haven't gotten super hardcore into before, but that I hope to this time around with RDR2, with Fallout 76, with a few others as well. But let's get right into it. The first thing... <laughs> They'll probably hang you, buddy. <laughs> and, and I'll wait till the gameplay actually, like the, the in-game gameplay gets going instead of the cutscene. You coming, buddy? Man. In the late 1800s, America was evolving on its way to becoming the most powerful country in the world. New immigrants arrived, thriving outposts became towns, and civilization was spreading rapidly into the huge, wild, and lawless frontier. With Red Dead Redemption 2, Rockstar... Pause. Okay, they flipped the camera, and it is gorgeous. The graphics are insane. This is a PlayStation 4 and Xbox One game, and it looks incredible. It's going to look so freaking good on your PS4 Pro or your Xbox One X. I'm really excited for that 500 million edition PS4 Pro. I hope I can get one on August 24th. They're only making 50,000. It's got that chrome plate on the front. I want to figure out what number I could get. It looks so sick. It's got like that deep blue. It's, it's real classy. But this game looks classy in its own right and sets a new bar for open world extravaganza. The beauty here is just absolutely remarkable. And I think like... In our heads, we don't remember exactly how Red Dead 1 looked. It looked good at the time. It looked pretty. But this is on such a different level, it's insane. If you compare them side by side, you'll be blown away by how far things have come uh, in the gap between sequel. And it's ridiculous. Like, the game looks so freaking good, and you'll continue to Our see that throughout the trailer. to create a living world that's not simply open, but deeper. Like, even this shot right here with the mud coming out of the window, transitioning from that quick cut scene into gameplay, like, Come right here. On, pretty boy. More interactive and detailed than ever. It's so pretty, and it's so rugged. Like, I love that they managed to make it look so good without looking too clean, if that makes sense. Sometimes when games look really, really pretty, uh, and they're getting away from this lately, but sometimes they end up looking very waxy, very sterile, and that's not the case here. I mean, we're freaking in the mud. It's a dirty game, and I like that a lot. Combining action, storytelling. We need to get those people. Okay, we'll pause here, and that brings up my second uh, thing that I love the most about this gameplay reveal. And that would be the variety and the detail. The variety is incredible. We see insane difference in environments, like they, they mentioned, from bustling towns to uh, far off forest to this snowy nighttime area we've got really incredible lighting effects and then the amount of just intricacy in the environments that you do explore they show and they go into towns when you're in your camp which we'll get to in a little bit it's it's remarkable you know i i categorize game developers as sort of like naughty dog irrational and then everybody else rockstar has to fit into that top group right and the detail here on display is insane the fact that they are able to pour that much heart soul and artistic effort into every scene it just adds a sense of immersion, and I feel like they're going, I know it's not this, but I feel like they're going more sim-heavy here, um, and, and just with the camp mechanics and with your interaction with the world and just with the scope and the size and how they said they wanted to blur the lines between quests, side quests, never feel like you're being guided, but yet you're always welcome to do so many different activities uh, or optional missions it does begin to feel like this is a living, breathing Western world. Warm and, fed. and gameplay in new ways. As you live, Dead Eye is back. And fight to survive as an outlaw in a notorious gang. As long as we get paid or you get shot, I'm happy. <laughs> Only a couple months, man. It's already August. Part one, indicating we'll get more. The game is an attempt to capture this pivotal moment when the age of outlaws was ending and the modern world was... Some of these shots are just out of this world. Like, again, they're, they're indicating themselves. They want to capture this moment in time. They want to give you a, a, a simulation of the world here. Born. There is a huge world... The lighting is crazy. Ties back to my, my first topic of graphical 
prowess. It's a lot. To explore, set across a range of America's heart. Like you can explore all of that. You can explore Land all of this. Frontier. From harsh mountain. God. I mean, I think God of War set the standard earlier this year, and probably in like up close situations and given the fantastical nature um of the game god of war may look better but the scope here and just what they're attempting to capture and that ruggedness like you really get that rugged feel it's 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 almost parallel like different but still just as impressive hills and dense forests to untamed swamplands that looks really cool i love this shot too i feel like that lizard is like i want to grab him not really deserts rugged livestock towns to modernizing cities and much more all populated with a diverse cast of characters from turn of the century life now shoo please hmm. i'm waiting for someone interesting to turn up even this shot is really impressive and again i love the fact that they have sort of the writing on the buildings that they go above and beyond you'll see later on when we enter um inside environments that there's things just scattered about the shelves and that they pay attention to every nook and cranny and again that's something that irrational naughty dog and rockstar do so well that set them apart and establish a lore immer an immersion um and just a a level of world building that make these games monumental rather than just an experience you play as arthur morgan a trusted senior gun in the vanderling gang a band of outlaws and outcasts on the run from the pressures of civilized life we are going to borrow a little money from old Uncle hmm. Sam and be out of his hair once and for all. All right, so this brings us to our third point, which is the camp, your camp. The fact that your camp is a place that is going to function as your hub where you will interact with other characters. They mentioned you'll do chores. Uh, you have to help supply and keep morale at this camp. So you will need to provide them with food, with water. I'm assuming shelter. Um, you will need to boost the spirits of your your camp and of your gang and hunting is a big part of that we'll see that a little bit later in the trailer and the more time you spend with these characters the more you'll unlock and the deeper you'll go in terms of quests in terms of secrets and i expect that you'll be able to bring new characters into the fold or maybe even kick some out we'll see the interaction system and how there's a big emphasis on choice decision and how you relate to other npcs um i also wonder how much base building there is if you can add different elements to your camp they say that your camp will be moving throughout the game they do mention that there are chores and everyone sort of lives a life within the camp so are there ways that you can bring you know a little bit more ease to their efforts can you expand can you build is there any of that uh, in this game or is it more just managing straight up resources i'm not exactly sure i hope they make that fun and not tedious i, I hope that it's filled with you know the activities I'm guessing are going to really lead to that. Like they mentioned, hunting will help provide food. You can go pick up, you know, a can of beans, but hunting and bringing back uh, the animals and, and selling the pelts and things like that is really how you'll keep your camp, uh, you know, functioning at an optimal level. So I hope that they're able to tie the activities back in, in interesting ways. And then the rewards are interesting, whether it is in terms of expanding your base or incorporating new characters or unlocking new secret missions. Time they are forced to flee an area, the gang sets up a camp as a base. This is where gang members eat, sleep, perform chores, play games, and share stories. Anyway, I got caught by some hill country sheriff stealing a chicken, I think it was, <laughs> and he decided I was going to be hanged for it. These are the people Arthur calls family, and you will get to know each gang member over the course of the game. I wonder how many there will be, and I also wonder if the the moves are predetermined in a linear fashion based on the story and plot, which I expect, or if there is an opportunity to sort of move as you will, or, or maybe it's sort of an idea of like, okay, you can pick, like, are we ready to leave, or do we need to do more there? Um, I'm wondering if the, like, how they segment the world and how they determine those moves and what that then means for not only the story, but also exploration. So, yes. That's such a beautiful shot. Again, just like the fog, the mist, the mud, like there's a grit here that I feel that they've mastered, you know, in, in a way particle effects that give it just a a very tactile feel to me. Save the silly bastard's life and you and him go robbing sheep. Helping the camp with food and supplies will... For some reason, I, again, this is really tough for me. I don't like the hunting element of, of Red Dead because skinning those animals just feels weird. Um, but the animation of carrying this across your shoulder to me just stands out as like, goodness gracious, the animation's 
are a home Keep run here. Around. And and I know that that's not something that we should glorify in any way and I'm not. I just think they did like they've nailed everything here. What haven't they nailed? Like everything is Oh hi. While spending time with other gang members so can good. reveal new secret. I like that. Spending time with your gang members, building the interaction, building the rapport uh, will hopefully unlock more cool things and more for you to do in the world. Fun things to do and opportunities for mischief. How about you and me go and redistribute some property? In and out of camp, the world is alive and responds to the player. Well, I this... This is where things are going to start to get really cool, I think, from a creating your own Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, aspect. And this is my fourth element that I love from this gameplay reveal, and that would be the interaction system and the fact that you get the character's name uh, at the bottom there, and then you have multiple options depending on the scenario. You can aim your weapon, you can threaten, you can greet, you can antagonize, you can uh, you know, walk away, you can kill, you can spare, and it's going to hopefully really expand out into not only how Arthur is viewed as you move about the world organically, but also I would hope in the overall plot and in some of the missions and in some of the quests that there are differences and splits that your reputation or rather how you handle certain situations ends up uh, dictating your experience. So they're bringing in more of that here and I think having a, a pretty granular, it's a very gamey system, right? Like press square to greet, press circle to antagonize, but it is going to give you concrete flexibility um, it's kind of an oxymoron, but you will have the concrete opportunity to flexibly choose how you interact with the world. Like, it'll be very definite. It's not just going to be like, well, you, you ran into this person, so I think we're... we're no, you're going to know, like, I am an outlaw that is out to get people, or I'm going to try and keep the peace, and hopefully the reactions are not just like, oh, God, people run away from you, but they do sort of play into that storyline and maybe even an inevitable conclusion. Rare tree! And you're... That's a creepy scene to me. It's a rare treat. I feel like that girl and the, the giant fat guy are about to welcome me into a world that I'm not ready for. Maybe not. Guns aren't the only way to interact with the environment. But you can pistol at people. They make sure to show you that. <laughs> Call out to a passing rider. That's a nice horse. I love that you can just say, that's a nice horse. Like, I'm definitely going to do that over and over again. I wonder how many lines of dialogue they have for uh, calling out to fellow passerbys. Talk yourself into trouble. I like that you can talk yourself into trouble too. Like again, how many different scenarios are there here? Red Dead Redemption One obviously did have um, some dynamic events and encounters and things like, oh god, my horse was stolen, chase it. But here it seems like you are the impetus for those that you get to sort of initiate uh, those randomized uh, events, and it's it's you are coming upon them just like you did in RDR One, but here you have more like I said, control, flexibility, uh, to sort of mold this world as you see fit. With a local tough guy. Clear out. Or out of trouble with a town sheriff. Or intimidate a witness into silence, and more. Keep your mouth shut, you're mm. dead friend. I do wonder how these systems all work and, and how they all factor in, in terms of like, is it just meters? So if I was at that sheriff and trying to, uh, you know, really diffuse the situation, would it be based on a meter of how respected I was or how are they deciding that because it's not like oh I don't think there's like oh you press square and then you pick an option of what to say and then it just goes based on your dialogue I think it's just like oh you're trying to just diffuse so is that always a win is it just a, a dice roll is it based on things Arthur's done in the past how does that system all work I'd be curious to know you don't want to involve yourself with this Con I do love that Rob is an option here and that hopefully would tie back into the camp and also your inventory and your ability to buy new weapons and gear um, so it's again a very fully fleshed out and 360 experience I feel um, this scene also like off in the distance that could be a real shot that windmill over there looks freaking fantastic confrontations can be escalated or diffused take it easy do what you want I don't care you can form friendships God, you did or make enemies as you choose you killed my cousin you sick son of a bitch your actions have consequences and it's up to you love that they include a Lion King moment here I do think that if nothing else no matter the depth no matter the lot consequences of this interactive system here it's going to help establish your rdr2 experience as very different than my rdr2 experience is very different than his or her rdr2 experience because we all will interact in these instances differently and choose different options that will inevitably lead to different outcomes and even if i choose diffuse and you choose diffuse or i choose escalate and you choose escalate the way that we handle it the way it goes about sort of the dynamic event that occurs and the kill or the escape that ends up happening will inevitably be a little different, and therefore it's a great way to ensure different experiences for every player at 
what seems like virtually majority of the turns. Decide just how honorable Arthur is. Should I have killed you, Jimmy Brooks? <laughs> hmm. Shooting and fighting have both been radically improved to make combat deep. Give me some uh, Mission Impossible Fallout vibes at the end there when they're fighting on the big rock, but I'm glad that they've improved combat. They say they've improved hand-to-hand -hand and gunplay, which is nice. And engaging at all times. Each weapon has unique characteristics with realistic reload and recoil that always keeps the player grounded and connected to the action in a gunfight. Again, they really place a big emphasis here on animations and making sure that the realistic nature of the animations and the way that they're incorporated into the game enhance that sim-like feel and enhance your immersion in the world, which I, I have much respect for. Uh, the gunplay and combat would have been one of my picks, but there's not enough detail there. I, I feel like it would be weird to pick. In a similar way, the bond with your horse so is instead, crucial and changing. This is what I'm going to pick, the bond with the horse. We've seen a lot of games that try to do dogs or horses or companions, and Rockstar and Red Dead are trying it once again here. You will bond with your horse, and depending on their breed and how you treat them, how you feed them, how you groom them, they will react differently. They might be more skittish. They might be more obedient. They might be afraid of water or love water. It's, it's going to depend, and I wonder how much variety there will be and how you establish that, how many nuances you have along the way in terms of what you do is is it an on off switch with the horse or is it more of a, a sliding scale and how do you impact that but i like the idea that uh, i could have a really mangy and just dirty horse but he's super obedient or maybe that's not even possible either way i'll make sure that he's fed lots of carrots lots of love uh and i just i think that again it's really trying to bring you to the world um our camp looks really small here in this situation and i do wonder if eventually you know getting new wagons or new tents or different tents or maybe you can even bring stores to your own base things of that sort uh, will come into play what the sort of upgrade and improvement system is like based on your treatment of the animal hold still girl some breeds are better suited for certain tasks i got a fella been looking for a decent workhorse like this for a while your saddle and saddlebags can store extra weapons along with supplies and animal carcasses that you pick up while out roaming or hunting I'm sorry. Over time, the bond between you and your horse will grow, making them easier to control in tense situations. Yeah, he's a great horse, aside from when the devil got him. <laughs> that is really cool. And I hope we get a video just all on menus and systems. I mean, that would be super illuminating. A rich and varied ecosystem thrives in the world. This is super cool as well. I mean, even that scene of the moose walking over the mountaintop uh, and you riding by with the lighting, uh, the god rays kind of coming through, it's just incredible. I, I feel like this game is going to be screenshot heaven. Full of predators. Little bit of uh, reptilian activity there at night, that's cool. Prey and scavengers. All smart and sometimes deadly. You want to come with me? I'll show you how we hunt one. Hunting helps the camp or earns you money. That shot is so pretty. And again, this is a way to emphasize uh, the base element as well. Like I mentioned, you can go grab food uh, and hunting is the best way to do that. Wound an animal and you'll have to track them down. Animal pelts and other items you find can be traded for cash to you. Like these, these shots are what I was really referencing earlier with the detail. Like they even have names and stuff for the food items you see on the shelves. Um, some things are placed in bottles. Some of them are askew. Like it's, it's just so well done. And that is a very like that level of handcrafted detail is just so important to me and it really establishes a lore and a world that I really want to be a part of and that sticks with me even as I lay the controller down. Visit general stores, gunsmiths, saloons, and elsewhere. This is God's own country and I feel I'm in purgatory. There he is trying to take a screenshot. This is a world that is rich in depth and detail. All designed to be explored on horseback. This is like my Breath of the Wild shot right here. I really felt like we're about to jump off the Great Plateau and go find a shrine. So pretty and so massive. Or on foot. As you live the fateful journey of a gang of outlaws on the run across America. Okay, my favorite shot of the whole trailer is coming up. Get ready for it. In the next- This one. This scene is insane. The detail, the people, what's about to go down. I feel like this is so crazy. They're referencing the next trailer that's gonna emphasize uh, missions and quests. But, like, just look at the lighting, even the environment outside, the differences on both sides of the train, the people, their reactions. We'll look at missions. Robberies are coming, the chandelier, like, dude, Activities. this is so cool. Enemy gangs. 
robberies, other things to do, and much more. I love that they have other things to do on top of activities, missions, and robberies. Just the game is massive, and they haven't even talked about multiplayer. Obviously, the online component is going to be a massive part of RDR2. Battle Royale might be in there, and we know that there are some interesting modes as well, so we'll have to stay tuned for that. Including but... the evolution of sharpshooting using the Deadeye system. I'll be honest, I don't think Deadeye is that exciting, so I'm surprised that this is what they closed with, but okay. The game looks absolutely fantastic, though. October 26th can't come soon enough. I cannot wait for that next trailer. And that wraps up my five favorite things from the Red Dead Redemption 2 gameplay reveal. We've got the fact that the graphics look absolutely insane, that the environments are varied, and that there's so much detail there. This base mechanic, your hub, your camp that you will be interacting with and helping supply, and I would hope improving and building upon as you go. You've got your horse, who is a companion, and just sort of the whole animal ecosystem and how that all is going to work, but that you will build this bond with your horse and your choices do matter. And then they obviously matter as well with NPCs and that whole interaction system. The fact that you can diffuse, you can escalate, you can even just wave and say hi to everyone that you meet and how that will help to create your own organic experience of Red Dead Redemption 2. So nice. The game is shaping up to be super freaking awesome. And like I said, even though I'm not the biggest GTA fan, I can see myself sinking tons of hours into this one. Fallout 76 and this are my two most anticipated games. Cannot freaking wait. Let me know your take in the comments down below, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Until next time, drink some hot chocolate. Those skyboxes, baby. Gonna be dreaming of those for another uh, two months and 17 days. In the meantime, though, thanks again. We will see you all later.